So, to survive flying off a cliff, all I need is just a fucking helmet, isn't it? How's it going, guys? So I just got back from watching Furious 7, just fresh off my mind. This movie, what the fuck, dude? Don't get me wrong, it has its action scenes and all the top just balls to the walls fighting and all that stuff, like what men craves, like fuck yeah, testosterone and shit, but yeah. But fuck. <laughs> you know how in every other Fast and the Furious movie there's always that one scene where they say, fuck logic, logic goes up the window in one specific scene, but you know of course the whole entire movie says fuck logic. But this one just takes it out the fucking window from the first reel. It's, like I said, there's one specific scene in every Fast and the Furious movie where they say fuck logic. But god damn every scene in this movie. It's like I never knew how to survive a cliff is basically to wear your helmet and not get a scratch on you. Here's another thing, like, not one person has a scratch on them when they're getting their shit kicked out of them. The entire time I'm watching people beat the shit out of each other, I'm thinking back to the Monty Python. Tis pus a flesh wound. So, Vin Diesel against Jason Statham. Street fight with pipes and shit. Tis but a scratch, nothing but a flesh wound. <laughs> the Rock, thrown off the fucking building, Back first onto a car, survives the motherfucker. Tis nothing but a flesh wound. <laughs> uh, Jason Statham, Vin Diesel, head to head in a car, crash head to head. Tis nothing but a scratch. <laughs> Ronda Rousseff versus Michelle Rodriguez. In an all-out bitch fest fight, tis nothing but a scratch. Tony Shaw versus Paul Walker, tis nothing but a flesh wound. But anyways, let's get to the basics of this movie. Of course, this is Paul Walker's last movie, and yeah, he goes out in a good way. Think it, but they made the movie seem like he was gonna die at a certain point, cause like they were saying like. I'm sick of these funerals, man. Not one more funeral. And then Paul Walker saying to his wife, it's like, I love you, man. I love you so much. I'll s I just love you. They're just making it seem like Paul Walker was going to die in this movie. But they didn't. Because uh, they basically showed him going off with his family at the end. That was a good send off. Plus, like, the homage that they, they did for him like when he was in the first movie up till now and their final goodbye which like you know you're waiting for it the entire movie is like you're waiting for that moment where you see your final goodbye and you say like I can take this I'm not gonna cry boom happens you're like Charlie Brown and fucking crying <laughs> don't tell me you didn't at least shed a tear cuz you know, Paul Walker, man. Anyone else notice that in the building when he was fighting against Tony Jaw, it looked like they stepped into the different movie, like the Brick Mansions movie, where like parkour everywhere. Cause like Tony Jaw was doing parkour and Paul Walker was just doing whatever. Oh, another thing, them sliding down the stairs, like fucking Tony Jaw should have been killed by that. It's like head first, but no, he just gets up. Like I said, everyone just gets a flesh wound in this movie or a scratch. Yeah. So basically, yeah. And there's another scene like where the car drives from one building to another building to another building, which is just out of this world ridiculous beyond belief. But is it me or do anyone else think when that scene happened, like you were thinking of Homer Simpson and Bart Simpson chasing after the pig? It's like, the car goes through the window. It's like, it's just a little scratched. It's still good. It's still good. Goes through another window. It's just a little scratched. It's still good. It's still good. Falls down. Falls apart. It's like, it's just a little wrecked. It's still good. It's still good. It's gone, Dad. That's what I was thinking of when I saw that scene. Oh, what's up with the side mission in this movie? We're supposed to go after Jason Statham, but then Kurt Russell comes in saying like, oh, 
we must find Digimon Shaman Shaman. Whatever that actor's name is. He's an amazing actor. I just can never say his name. Digimon. Du -du -moon. Ju Insert name here. To get him and rescue this hacker. Meanwhile, they have a hacker, but you need a female hacker. That's a side mission. It just went off in a different direction. And then we go back to the real movie. Where they're going after Shaw. And like, Shaw is unstoppable. So is basically everybody else in this movie. Like I said, beating the shit out of each other. And all they get is like, no scratches whatsoever. But again, it's Fast and the Furious. What do you expect? So I would recommend it to people. Because like, you know. This movie's franchise is not over. They're still gonna go with more. They're gonna milk it for all it's worth. Just because Paul Walker's dead doesn't mean they're gonna stop. You know they're gonna continue the franchise. Fast and the Furious 8 all the way to 22, probably. But yeah, those are my thoughts on the Fast and the Furious 7 movie. What did you guys think? Humanoid freak out. Bye.